live streamed on our social media platforms. We have invited uh, all the universities and colleges in the country to watch this program. Friends, as you know, recently UGC has announced the guidelines for establishing R&D cells in all the higher educational institutions. And I'm glad to inform you that uh, many universities and colleges have established this R&D cell and many of them are doing well. But however, we have a lot uh, to achieve in our higher educational institutions. We need to motivate many more universities and colleges to establish these R&D cells. The primary objective of the establishment of R&D cells is to strengthen the research ecosystem in the universities. Our young faculty, they need to know how to write successful project proposals, how to manage their projects successfully. They need to be provided with information on what kind of funding opportunities are, are available nationally and internationally. We need to encourage not only basic research, but take the research to prototypes and finally uh, to the people lab to the people. And that is the only way we can make our country technologically advanced. We have invited a representative um, section of the higher educational institutions here who have established their R&D cells and who have been doing very well. The idea behind this meeting is to share our experiences in running these R&D cells so that we can identify both the challenges and also the opportunities. Each one of you have five minutes time to make a brief presentation. You can either speak with or without the PowerPoints. I understand that some of you have already passed on these PowerPoints in case you have a problem in sharing these PowerPoints from your end, our officers from UGC will share on those PowerPoints. My request to all of you is uh, to stick to the time slot that is given. In about four and a half minutes, if you can briefly explain the activities of the R&D cell in your institution, then we can move over to the next speaker. At the end of the presentations, if there is still time left, we can have um, a brief discussion amongst us. Uh, we can even take some questions from you, uh, from UGC side, if there is anything else that can be done to support you, uh, we will be very glad to take uh, some of your questions. So with those comments, uh, we will uh, begin with the presentations. I will invite uh, each one of you and uh, you can share your slides and make the presentation. So first I would like to invite uh, Professor Praveen Kumar Verma, who is the Director R&D Cell at JNU to make a brief presentation. Thank you, sir, uh, for inviting me for uh, this uh, uh, August gathering. So uh, the I'm uh, going to present. Uh, is my uh, slides are visible? Hello. Yeah. So uh, yeah. Thank you. So uh, first of all, I uh, I would like to tell you about the, the establishment of uh, R&D cell in uh, Jawaharlal Nehru University, which has been established by uh, Professor uh, Jagdesh Kumar, that time Vice Chancellor, uh, near about six years back, and uh, that has given you know many fold increase in the uh, in the research and development programs, the the uh, R&D uh, the programs uh, as well as the the some of the projects which we have received uh, is not only the inter-institutional but intra-institutional projects also we have received uh, in uh, in uh, uh, the past. So I would like to you know, uh, brief about uh, something about the uh, since time is limiting. So I will be uh, giving you about the changing role of higher education institutions. 
and that is the usually the traditional way of uh, you know doing the research in the higher education mainly the uh, the the universities is that the, it's a source of academic knowledge which provides uh, of the academic education and mainly focus on the economic performance indicators that is the research excellence that the papers and the application of science in manufacturing that is patents so most of the times what uh, we have realized that uh, suppose there are 500 publication per year is coming from jawaharlal nehru university only two or three publication is going to be you know having the patent or uh, they are going to finally uh, in the uh, application or intent product development or something like that so that we have to increase mainly why what is happening you know that if you compare to other uh, side of the uh, the the world that uh, there most of the research has been done in india uh, in the uh, university system or the higher education system is not going to uh, not uh, has been you know developed into the product so this is the clear cut focus nowadays for the government of india as well there the new approach is that the, the system builders in the direct interaction with the societal partners and the emphasis on the role of institution as uh, uh, being conducive uh, to regional innovators so this is one of the most important uh, uh, factor where the regional uh, the uh, the interest should be you know uh, can be uh, taken forward by the uh, higher education institution of that particular area. So uh, b- that we have also in JNU, we have also started similar sort of things uh, uh, where we have started with the local uh, need and uh, other type of uh, uh, research, which uh, as well as the uh, the global needs also we have started in JNU. So the, the first question is that how to provide the time bound support to the uh, project PI. So establishing the R&D sale is the answer, uh, in my opinion, and uh, this is uh, that we have already already experienced in 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 uh, in our institute, and this work has to, is a primary support system to create conducive platform for enhanced research productivity. The R&D sale uh, also helps in the managing finance and timely submission of utilization certificates, purchase of equipments, and uh, engagement of manpower, etc. So the establishment of the separate project admin cell, which has been we have uh, been practicing in JNU, and the separate project finance uh, finance cell has helped us in speed up the process as well as the is also needed for the checks and balance in between the the admin and the finances. So the the another uh, most important part is the how to promote intra and inter developmental research collaboration uh, in HEI. So the working in isolation has a, neg- uh, has a negative impact on research outputs. So R&D cell can be a great help in establishing intra and inter-departmental collaboration. Suppose I am uh, I do have a work on the, the arsenic to- toxicity. There we have you know, developed a program in JNU where we have uh, uh, also taken care of the cancer p- uh, biology people. The, uh, the the environmental sciences the social so uh, the sciences people that we have you know integrated together so this is a very very important that intra and inter department collaboration can be established by r and cell so r and cell can help in creating thematic groups so you know initially we uh, we thought about you know something uh, some uh, some uh, thematic uh, uh, theme or something which we can work uh, together and then uh, we form a thematic group and then transdisciplinary research cluster also we have formed which is very helpful in generating the network projects and nowadays the network pro- uh, projects ha- has a higher impact in the in the terms of uh, the product development or something that you are going to have in the future so this is uh, this will facilitate greater access to research through the mobilization of research resource that you know suppose you have purchased one equipment that can be utilized by everybody so the resources facilities and funding that can be shared so that's why you know uh, even government of india is, uh, as, and very many uh, um, uh, the organization the funding agency they are supporting mainly the networking projects that can be you know a great help uh, with, right 
Uh, Professor Verma, we have to conclude now. Yeah, yeah, just one, one second. Right. So the, uh, they, this is the, also one of the important thing that how to promote innovation. So they, this is very important to the, promote uh, our innovation. Maybe we can go for the, the university industry government like triple helix system and uh, the, the direct interaction with the societal partner for the local level. And the th uh, another point uh, that is the how to develop the ecosystem for incubation and the startups. There we can do ga gap filling of basic research and uh, to application and commercialization skills, and also in establishing incubators uh, in HAI and uh, the collaborating with near about or uh, collaborating with nearby incubators that we have already established in JNU Atal Incubation Center in the leadership of uh, Professor Ranjit Mishkumar. And uh, the, the uh, main goal should be the works toward the Atmanirbhar Bharat through the innovation and the startups. The, another thing is that uh, recently our Prime Minister has talked about Jay Anusandhan mission should be our motto. Thank you, sir. For right, right, right. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Varma. Uh, let's now go to Professor Dinesh Kumar, who is Director R&D Cell, Central University of Gujarat. Yes, it is visible. You can start now. Okay, sir. Okay, okay. So, so um, good morning, when and all present or gathered here in this important meeting. So, at the outset, I would like to thank uh, our honorable chairman, University Grants Commission, Professor Jagdish Marsar for organizing this wonderful event on a very good theme that is uh, establishment of research and development say, in a higher education institution. This is simply outline my presentation which includes six headings. Uh, so we will quickly discuss uh, all about. So first that is uh, research is the pursuit of knowledge, observation, exploration, and uh, um, description and exploration of the unexplored ideas. And uh, importantly, uh, the research is to enhance quality education in uh, HEIs. Obviously, research uh, can take uh, societal uh, challenges. Research is the foundation of Atmanirbhar uh, Bharat or self reliant India. And uh, research can only solve the society's problems building by building or creating knowledge. And uh, research and development cell in uh, higher education institutions, they create or uh, um, create or generate a conducive environment to uh, productive research and increase uh, collaborations uh, among the faculty members or researchers at national as well as international levels. And obviously by considering the local, regional, national and international priorities, and the NEP 2020 will definitely play a role in catalyzing the mandated multidisciplinary, transdisciplinary, obviously translational research culture. And uh, by the wisdom of our honorable vice chancellor, sir, Professor Ramasankar Dubey, sir, research and development sir, is fully functional at the Central University of Gujarat, Gandhinagar. And RDC has uh, established with the, some certain objectives, uh, such as uh, to identify first area of thematic area of research and uh, identify cluster of groups and a consortia of researchers and to create enable provisions in research policies and to identify potential collaborators from industry research organizations and other stakeholders for cooperation and synergistic partners to act as a liaison between researcher and relevant research funding agencies to have a better coordination among university industry interlinkages, obviously, and uh, research and development cell can promote uh, research by identifying research uh, first areas or thematic research area, making a group of uh, frontline workers, and uh, by um, starting with, uh, I think, uh, research incentives and recognition to the uh, very um, recognized persons and uh, hardworking uh, researchers. 
and obviously by the development of technology and self-sustained cell or center, and uh, by capacity building or uh, by converting massive bulk or massive manpower into um, skilled manpower, obviously uh, research and development cell can uh, play a very or, uh, important or key role to research monitoring in terms of papers, outcomes, and uh, patents. Uh, uh, and uh, RDC can uh, mobilize uh, corpus funds from government, uh, alumni, and industry. And uh, RDC can promote consultancy services, research facilities, and technology transfer and licensing, research internship, industry partnership, and maybe uh, HEI take uh, provision for collaborative research in the uh, annual project. Corpus fund for uh, freshly or uh, recruited faculty as a you know, seed money. And obviously, uh, establishment of in-house research facility is a very important, and uh, it's a promotion for outsider, and its promotion is a very, very important to sustain the in-house research facility at, at any institution. And uh, RDC um, can promote the quality of a publication because we are at fourth on the list of number of papers in 2020 after China, USA, and UK. And we are ranked at 16th position in the country's H index. Uh, we have only 745 H index. Uh, only 15.8 percentage of total publications produced by Indian researchers featured in the top 10 journals globally after China, Germany, and um, UK. And we are ranked uh, 15th in the top 10 journal globally. It's a very um, not a good signal, and it stresses on a dire need to focus on quality of research in country. We are following best five practices at the Central University of Gujarat. We are providing a, con a conditional research environment to the researchers. And obviously, research uh, through research and development, uh, we are reviewing and monitoring the outcome of research papers and uh, allocation of time. And definitely, our competent authority is uh, recognizing and appreciating the hard working on a very good output of the research. And we are also promoting the uh, interdisciplinary and transdisciplinary research collaborations and the utilization and promotion of in-house research facilities as we have central instrumentation facility at the Central University of Gujarat, Gandhinagar. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to present my views on research and development set. Thank you, Manano. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Dinesh Kumar, and thank you for uh, concluding within the given time allotted to you. Uh, now let's move on to Professor G.S. Prasad, uh, Director R&D Cell at University of Hyderabad. Please go ahead. It is visible. Professor Prasad, you have to unmute. Yes, sir. Am I audible now? Yes, yes. Please yes, go sir, ahead. Sir, thank you. So I'm directly going to the best practices what we follow at the University of Hyderabad. Uh, before that, when I was mute, I was thanking the UGC and uh, Professor Jadish Kumar sir for giving us this opportunity. And the University of Hyderabad established a R&D section in the university in 2011, and a senior faculty was designated as coordinator of R&D. And the R&D section also has an advisory committee. Sir, am I audible? Yes, yes, you are audible. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So during these last uh, 20, uh, 11 years, what we have done, the R&D section basically coordinates with the funding agencies, forwarding all the applications after proper scrutiny to the funding agencies. We also have brought the guidelines for project staff recruitment, etc. And we also have a project staff, uh, project management software. Suppose uh, whatever projects that were sanctioned to the university after 2011, all these project information is available at the click of button as a coordinator of R&D to me and to the respective faculty members. They can see the uh, expenditure, et cetera, and it helps them in um, uh, preparation of the utilization certificates, et cetera. And I'm not going to the details of the projects, et cetera. We also have a 
patent cell. Like uh, Professor Praveen was mentioning, compared to our uh, publications, patent number is very less. Um, we are making efforts to increase this also. And we all have also brought the guidelines for industry sponsored research projects, mm -hmm. consultancy, et cetera, where we have designed the ways of how to share the priorities between the faculty and the university, et cetera. We also have brought the research policy where the research ethics and other things are involved. And this is part of the research and development. And we also have the innovation activities in the university. University of Hyderabad is probably one of the first universities to establish a, a technology business incubator in the university. That was established in 2007, followed by Hyde in 2013 and uh, BioNest in 2018. Once these three used to run as a separate individual projects, and once we have realized that there is a need to bring all of them under Singer umbrella, and we should have a common guidelines for managing the incubation centers. So we have created a separate center. We call it Technology Industrializing Entrepreneurship Unit. And simultaneously, we have brought out the incubation policy. We have also brought out the faculty enterprise scheme. If some of our faculty wants to start the startups, we have systems in place. And in the process, we all have also learned university being a uh, non-profit organization, it, it cannot hold equity in the startup companies. So we have established a Section 8 company. We call it uh, ASPAC. And probably University of Hyderabad is very unique in the sense it has created a position of Professor of Innovation Studies where I joined. Yeah. So now, in the meantime, in 2019, UGC has circulated the guidelines in the need of uh, strengthening the innovation ecosystem in the university. So we, what we have decided, we have club with the R&D section and tie you to create a center. We call it Center for Research, Innovation, Technology, and Entrepreneurship. The, the naming is like this. Research leads to innovation. Innovation leads to technologies. Technologies can produce the enterprises. So the aspect section eight company, which was there under Tayu, has now come under the right. Yeah. So I'm not going into details of this, uh, as how Aspire works, et cetera. I just want to emphasize Aspire coordinates the activities of the three incubation centers. We have prepared guidelines for the incubators. We also have the Project Advisor Committee and Management Committee for each and every incubator. There is about 50,000 square feet uh, space that can accommodate 75 startups, including 15 co-working spaces. Currently, we have 55 startups incubated in our three incubation centers. This includes seven of our faculty, six of our alumni. One of their name is BICUS. The name is by Central University Students. So already 13 startups have graduated. And we also have a board of directors for the ASPIRE, for which VC of the university is the chairman. And each incubation center is coordinated by a faculty. Okay. Now, what is there for the students in the innovation ecosystem? We have innovation clubs in uh, almost all the science and engineering colleges, uh, sorry, in, in engineering departments. And we also coordinate very well with the Institution Innovation Council. We have brought out a pre-incubation facility for the students. We call it concept competition. You can see the uh, thing here. We have already selected uh, four of our alumni for pre-incubation. The idea is they can test their idea for six months if they are confident. And depending on their specialization, they can move to one of these three incubators. This is the pre-incubation facility. And in the nutshell, the RDC are right at UH. It is the central, it is the heart of the entire uh, research and innovation ecosystem of the university. At the school's level, it coordinates with the uh, faculty in forwarding the uh, research projects, taking care of their patents, publications, etc. It coordinates with the funding agencies, uh, uh, for the sponsored projects, consultancy, internships, etc. We also in close coordination with the Institution Innovation Council. I am also part of the Institution Innovation Council as vice chairman. And of course, I was explaining about the aspect which catalyzes the startup ecosystem in the campus through incubation centers. And we also share the knowledge and collaborative research in training programs. Now, so once this was established, how this is going to run, the RDC are right. right. So soon after I joined, I submitted a proposal we have to the uh, DST and we were funded the project, we call it DST UOH Technology Incubation Centers and under which we mentor six universities or colleges each from the Andhra Pradesh and Telangana 12. 
And we also have a Help India project. This is an Erasmus European Union funded project in which there are six uh, European Union partners and seven Indian partners are there. Yeah. So this is, I was telling, uh, we, we organized. Very seven. good, very good. Uh, Professor Prasad, we have to and, conclude now. Thank you, sir. <laughs> this is the last uh, one. It's, it's a wonderful information that you have provided, especially mentoring uh, colleges and nearby institutes is a very welcome move. Uh, thank thank you. you, Professor Prasad. Uh, let's now move to Professor uh, Sudhir Saxena, who is Director R&D Cell, Punjab University, Chandigarh. Namaskar. Can you hear me, sir? Yes, sir. We can hear you. Uh, uh, namaskar. Namaskar, Professor Jagdesh Kumar. And I'm grateful to uh, the University Grants Commission uh, for inviting me to have a very brief interaction with all the leading educationists uh, working under the motivational guidance provided by the UGC Chairman, Professor Jagdesh Kumar. So we at Punjab University Chandigarh, sir, uh, to put it briefly, uh, we have an already well-established research ecosystem, but uh, we, are, we are reorienting the entire research ecosystem as per UGC communication uh, prepared by the UGC under the guide dynamic leadership of Professor Jagdesh Kumar in March 2022. That is the guidelines or UGC guidelines for the setting up of uh, the research and development. Professor uh, Sudhir, could you please uh, unmute yourself, Professor Sudhir Kumar? Yes. Sir, can you hear me now? Yes, can you hear me, we sir? can hear you. So, yes. Sir, uh, we, as I said, that we have already a well built ecosystem for research, innovation, and technology development, but we are galvanized into action. Uh, again, uh, since March 2022, when the UGC under the dynamic leadership of Professor Kumar Jagdesh Kumar introduced that uh, the guidelines for setting up research and development cell. That was perhaps for the first time in India that at a national level, the UGC envisaged a plan uh, to, to, to put into a, a kind of fresh energy and thinking in the entire research ecosystem which is to be implemented through different RDCs in Indian University. So, sir, uh, we have already established, to put it briefly, the six uh, committees as en envisaged in the, in, the, in the program of setting up of research and development, sir. And the, the APEX committee is research advisory committee, followed by, which that would be the APEX body to take all the decisions and ratify all the decisions taken by the uh, research and development cell. Then we have a finance and infrastructure committee. We have a research program policy development committee. We have a collaboration and community reorientation committee. We have a product development and monitoring and commercialization committee. And we have also the sixth committee meant for supervision of IPR legal and ethical matters. And all the leading uh, research scientists of our university uh, I have been given different roles in all these five committees. Uh, yes, of, of course, apart from the RAC, where some four or five leading scientists and social scientists would be there uh, under the leadership of the, the vice chancellor of the university. Now, Punjab University Chandigarh has uh, several platforms for the conduct of research, uh, which have societal as well as significance for the, the development of research and collaboration. For example, we have the CRIC. The CRIC is the cluster of innovation and research activities in this region. And through CRIC, we may mobilize resources, we collaborate with industry, as well as the affiliated colleges of Punjab University. So we make a data pool, we make a pool of research-based information, and through CRIC, we organize several functions we are now going to reorient CRIC in the, in the light of this, this new, educa new education policy, uh, National Education Policy 2020, and the guidelines of research and development cell. Sir, we also have perhaps one of the best in India, uh, CIL and CEF, uh, that is perhaps second or third in India right now, but it used to be the best in India in terms of research analysis, 
monitoring and imparting training to the different scientists and blossoming uh, scientists of India, including the school-based bright scholars. So we have also taken into our purview not only the colleges and the universities, but our outreach would extends even to the schools. We also have the EUR scheme, which is being supervised through BioNest or Birak. You know, that is also one of the leading research centers of this university, whereby we invite the industry, we invite collaboration uh, with industry in a very, and not only financially fruitful, but also academically and from the point of view of research, a very important interface. We also have sir, Tech India and CIPP. Now tech, through Tech India and CIPP, we tap all those resources which we can put into the creation of patents, the use of those patents in industries. We have more than 95 patents, sir. And the industries particularly located in North India, in Ludhiana, Jalandhar, Kanpur, Delhi, and other neighboring areas, they come to us, we provide them their need-based solutions through CIPP and Tech India. And we have a huge infrastructure of incubation, gener generation of ideas and implementation of technology and technology development through several incubation centers. Now, these incubation centers have been set up in arts, humanities, and not only confined to those research centers, we have also set up incubation centers in hostels. And we, we, we are not providing a kind of scientism through the incubation centers or the technology development centers. Sir, each idea generated in the humanities departments is a kind of incubated idea. So we have also evolved certain, certain mechanisms providing financial help even to those students of humanities and social sciences where the ideas are generated, not through any right, capital sir. intensive program. So right. sir, it's a new orientation that you have provided mm -hmm. and we are trying to uh, live up to the expectations of R&D sellers and university in your in your paper. And secondly, sir, we want to be Atmanirbhar, not by tagging ourselves to the Westoxified knowledge systems of the West. We are trying to, we have created more than 350 PDFs and videos on Indian knowledge systems, sir. These, these PDFs and, and videos will invigorate the minds of the young researchers in humanities, social sciences, as well as in right, science. Right. So, Thank you uh, in, uh, in view of time, we have to conclude here. I know many of you are doing great work and uh, you're very enthusiastic to share all that. Um, but we now have to move on to the next speaker, uh, Professor Mutulakshmi, who is Director of R&D Cell at uh, Sri Shankaracharya University of Sanskrit, Kerala. Please go ahead. Yes, you are audible. Please go ahead. The screen is uh, visible also, no? Yes, it is visible. Ah, thank you, thank you. Good morning, everybody. Uh, Sri Shankaracharya University of Sanskrit is privileged to be part of the online lecture series organized by UGC as director of research and development cell in our university and also as pro vice chancellor of our university. I'm presenting before you a gist of the academic activities initiated by R&D cell in the last four years. Hope our perspective of R&D cell will be evident from this presentation. Professor Muthalakshmi, uh, uh, kindly be very brief because we have only five minutes. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, R&D cell in Shankaracharya University was instituted in 2018 as a forum to give a strategic leadership to the research activities of the university to ensure a sustainable research environment to frame policies and guidelines related to research and to encourage interdisciplinary research activities. Its structure is, uh, it has an advisory committee with three renowned external academic personalities, director, members from faculty and members from office. And we have conducted programs, uh, lectures and workshops on research methodology and related topics for uh, research scholars and faculty development program uh, for research guides and university 
and college faculty in and outside uh, our university and the classes on research and publication ethics all of us know uh, ugc has made the class uh, course on research and publication ethics as compulsory course for the coursework for uh, phd coursework so we are conducting the classes on rpe uh, in a common platform for uh, all the research scholars of all the departments of our university we have conducted the last four years such classes and the classes on research uh, this is uh, some models seven day national online workshop on aesthetic tradition in association with uh, sahapedia new delhi and alumni collective and the frame uh, r and d self frame the research policy of the university which is available in our website uh, and r and d self prepared guidelines for granting projects and seed money guidelines for online conduct of open defense pre submission presentations etc and created database of uh, phds awarded and project submission initiated submission of stride project of uh, to ugc which was approved and granted shankaracharya university is one among the 18 universities uh, selected for the scheme for transdisciplinary research for india's developing economy stride of ugc and ours is the only sanskrit university to be selected for stride and uh, uh, title of our stride project is academic enrichment program for language humanities and social science teachers and researchers and uh, stride project is uh, uh, on going on with excellent work and uh, future our future plans are to develop an institutional development plan in association with ipsc which in envisions a comprehensive research empowerment in university to act as a supporting mechanism to research scholars orienting them towards successful academic future to join hands with academic writing center of ssus which has uh, started already started functioning academic writing center of ssus to provide resource consultancy for the faculty in and outside of shankaracharya university and research scholars in their academic writing and publishing to strengthen academic collaborations with renowned universities uh, and Research institutes. We have had so many programs, academic programs, in collaborative, in collaboration with. We have an MOU with Adyar Library and Research Center, Chennai. We have conducted uh, collaborative academic programs, uh, collabor in collaboration with French Institute of Indology, Pondicherry. So, uh, R and D cell would like to strengthen academic collaboration uh, with renowned universities and research institutes. Uh, that's all. So uh, as of now, I request the UGC authorities to sanction more grants and funds for the further strengthening of R and D cell in our university. Right. Thank, right. You. Thank, right. you. Thank you. Thank you, Professor uh, Muthalakshmi. You know, when we talk about research and uh, innovation, uh, we generally think about science and technology, but uh, it is very important to involve social sciences, humanities, languages as part of our research and innovation. And I'm glad to see that. Uh, Although yours is a uh, Sanskrit university, you are uh, uh, emphasizing on research and development and all the best. So let's now move to Professor uh, Raja Papu, who is the director of R&D Cell, Geetam Vishakapatnam. Uh, good morning, sir. I hope I'm audible. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, respected uh, chairman, sir, uh, Professor Jagdish Kumarji, Professor uh, Rajneesh Jainji, other eminent academicians, researchers, and faculty members, uh, namaste. I would like to uh, begin this by thanking UGC for giving us this opportunity to speak about the various initiatives that uh, Geetam is undertaking on the establishment of R&D cell to promote uh, uh, research and innovation. So Geetam has established R&D cell uh, uh, since 2011. However, the activities that were undertaken were very limited in that. We have started bringing in major changes since mid 2019 and the new policy uh, from UGC is a very big boost for making a clear and robust plan and a roadmap to drive the R&I in our university. 
We are committed to implement the new policy, sir, uh, which is completely aligned with NEP 2020. I'll now show a few of the initiatives that we are taking at our university that might uh, help the other uh, universities also. So this is the overall R&D continuum that Gitam is working on. It uh, consists of three core pillars. The first one being the sponsored research and consultancy with focus on outcomes such as funded research, uh, grants, publications, patents. The second pillar is the translational research and product development pillar with core focus on developing products and technologies. And the third pillar is the venture development and the incubation pillar, which focuses on developing spin-offs, startups, tech transfers, and uh, ventures. We have also made provisions for enhancing the research infrastructure. Uh, Gitam uh, this year is investing 40 crores in, in this uh, academic year alone to procure sophisticated research equipment for sciences, engineering, and pharmacy disciplines. And we are also building a new maker space for innovators to build uh, proof of concepts. We have also made provisions to encourage the faculty through capacity building programs, workshops, focused FDPs, internal funding mechanisms, and also incentives to motivate faculty to publish. We have ensured that it is done through an ethical and a very fair process. So this is a broad overview of our entire R&D ecosystem, sir, uh, that we are building at Geetam. So we are encouraging strong collaborations and joint research projects with academic institutions as well as industry. So collaboration is the way forward. And I think the new policy also talks about its importance in a broad way. It is the organization structure of our R&D sensor. So it has been restructured recently and is in line with the new policy that is aligned with provisions of NEP 2020. Our objective uh, is to create a robust and sustainable research environment and an innovation ecosystem uh, within our university. And it also focuses on creating a strong support system for faculty, students, and uh, research fellows to achieve excellence in research. So as you can see that we have five core verticals working on various activities. I think uh, it will be overlap if I define everything. Uh, most of the speakers have already done that. So we have a research projects, grants and infrastructure vertical, consultancy and collaboration vertical, research activities, venture development center, and IPR and MCEL. I would like to highlight one key point here, sir, that we offer as a university, we offer VDC 111, which is a venture development course, which is an entrepreneurship module to all the freshmen joining uh, Gitam. So this helps in identifying the future entrepreneurs, researchers at a very early stage, and we work with them to develop them further. Then we have the accounts, finance, admin, and IT teams that support all the functions of the cell serve. So this is the policy framework that we have implemented. Most of the policies are revised as per the NEP 2020. Uh, sorry. Uh, so this is one space which we are extremely proud of, uh, sir. We believe that technology can bring a lot of agility and transparency in the way R&D cell functions. Through tech, we have reduced the administrative burden drastically at Geetam. Our vision is to create a paper-free office by end of 2022. And we have developed information systems to capture data. And uh, we want to enable uh, uh, the stakeholders and we present this data in a meaningful way so that they can make critical decisions. And finally, uh, I would like to say that, sir, that research is, as most of us know, that it is a critical element for HEI's success. And if we have a strong R&D cell, we will be able to get the best outcomes of NEP 2020 and we will be able to bring strong institutions. If any institution here requires any help from us, we'll be really happy to collaborate and we look forward to working with you and learning together. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, Professor Raja Papu. I know that is the idea you now to bring you together on one single platform so that we get to know each other, what work is going on and that should ultimately lead to collaborations amongst us. I now invite uh, Professor P. Lalita, who is a Dean R&D Cell at Avinash Lingam Institute for Home Science and Higher Education for Women in Tamil Nadu. Uh, thank you, sir. 
On behalf of the Research and Development Cell of the Avinash Lingam Institute for Home Science and Higher Education for Women, I wish a very good morning to all the dignitaries and attendees of this program. Uh, NEP 2020 it actually aims to promote the quality research within higher educational institutions. And only a strong and a vibrant uh, education system, which is focused on research, innovation, and technology development, can actually address the country's societal challenges. And Atma Nirbar Bharat is built on the integration of uh, research, innovation, and technology development. And research and development, we can say that is an essential pathway leading to the economic development of our country. So we have redesigned, refocused, and reformed our vision to implement NEP 2020. And the establishment of the research and development cell has actually catalyzed the research culture in our institute and has helped us in strengthening the research ecosystem within the institute. The objectives and the functions of the R&D cell, they are on par with the UGC guidelines, uh, focusing on creating a research uh, ecosystem, promoting the research publications, uh, projects, technology transfer, capacity building of the researchers, and also conducting research programs for students. The R&D cell of our institute was inaugurated on uh, December in December 2021 by our Honorable Chancellor, Professor S.P. Thyagarajan sir, and the structure and the functioning of the R&D is uh, detailed in our website. And we have an uh, effective and a robust uh, research governance operating with the vice chancellor as the apex body of the research and development cell. The director and the various committees, they drive the R&D governance. Evolving as a multidisciplinary institution, we offer 33 PhD programs in various disciplines, all under one roof. Thus, we are both teaching centric and research centric. And the research promotion policy of our university focuses on strengthening the basic translational research, collaborative research, applied research, not only within our nation, but throughout the world. And uh, these are some of the research policies which are framed and executed by the R&D cell. And to uh, promote the research policy, we have some strategies which are adopted. And one such is research focus is strengthening the research manpower. Teaching and learning, we can say, is underpinned by cutting edge research at various levels of research. Currently, we have 395 faculty members on almost twice the uh, strength of research scholars pursuing research. This evidence is strong research manpower. Yet another strategy for promoting research is the capacity building of the faculty through the mechan uh, mentoring mechanism by way of inducting eminent scientists as a research mentors who guide us in significant research activities. And one significant noteworthy outcome of mentoring is a consortium on DST hub anemia with various collaborating institutions. And mentioning a research convention, which is an annual event of the university is also noteworthy. And uh, this event actually provides a platform for uh, interaction with experts uh, and all uh, disciplined research scholars. They are given orientation on the general research guidelines by eminent experts from various institutions. Yet another significant strategy for promoting research is strengthening the infrastructure for research. So we have a very good library database and other resources which help in quality systematic research. And RIMS is through an institutional e-campus with 11 modules. And centralized research centers, they offer solutions to the equipment requirement of the researchers of not only of our scholars, but also to that of the neighboring institutes. And uh, these are some of the snapshots of the sophisticated equipment and uh, other research facilities. And uh, we do have uh, laboratories, 86 in number. The research needs of the undergraduate and postgraduate scholars are met by these departmental libraries. The technology development and IPR cell has encouraged patenting of innovative and uh, innovative research projects. So in all, we have 42 patent publications and 10 granted patents. And when it comes to the financial ecosystem, we pioneer in the implementation of PFMS. And faculty in the early and mid-career stage of research, they are encouraged uh, through seed money and startup grants. And our research scholars have also received funding through government fellowships, non-governmental and institutional fellowships. And we have also established four research uh, chairs to the tune of 40 lakhs. And we would like to present unto you the few significant achievements in research after the development of R&D cell. Uh, 14 new patents were filed after 2021 and five have been granted. And the constitution of Kapila Committee we have organized uh, uh, various events for promoting research. Uh, one noteworthy is academic writing and manuscript preparation workshops. And we have initiated um, publication promotion, technology transfer. That is a, and yet another initiative. And the global distribution of uh, linkages, it reveals a strong international and national linkages of the Institute, which is quite evident from the 272 collaborations and 57 active MOUs. And very one significant achievement in research 
is the enhancement in the research profile of the university in terms of Scopus H index citations and publications. And uh, research incentives are also given to the meritorious achievers in uh, research. So I'm confident that the establishment of uh, research and development cell in higher educational institutions will definitely aid in the creation of a research ecosystem for a reliable, impactful, and a sustained research output. So I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the UGC chairman for this opportunity and also for the development of the uh, research guidelines, which has helped us uh, uh, in establishing the RNDC itself. Thank you. Sir. Thank you, Professor Alita, for a brief and wonderful presentation. Um, let's now move to Dean R&D Cell, uh, Professor Avik Mukherjee, who is Dean R&D Cell, Central Institute of Technology, Assam. Thank you and uh, good morning to everyone. Uh, respected Professor Chairman, Professor Jagdish Kumar and respected dignitaries. Um, is the slide visible? Yes, yes. Uh, uh, slide slide is not yet visible. Please share it. Is it visible? No, not it. It's visible, right? Now it is visible. Please go ahead. Yeah, so, um, so good morning again. And uh, so, yeah, so uh, because of the shortage of time, let me um, uh, uh, not talk about, uh, we all know about R&D cell. I think it's a very appropriate um, effort uh, that has been put forward under the umbrella of um, National Education Policy uh, 2020. Uh, for us, CIT Kokrajhar, uh, we are, um, I should say we are still um, um, in, in the very beginning of uh, research oriented approach in education. Higher Education Institute, our institute was established in 2006, but we became a deemed university um, in 2019. So our R&D cell was established only after that. Um, so it is a very appropriate time when we have uh, got this uh, opportunity to set up an R&D cell in our institute and we have taken the initiative to form the committees uh, heading, uh, headed by our research advisory council, which is headed by our honorable director, Professor T.G. Sitharam. And uh, in, this, uh, in this institute, we right now have approximately uh, 185 to uh, 200 uh, scholars, PhD scholars, that is. Uh, we have uh, funding from um, uh, different uh, government uh, extramural granting organizations, including DST, um, DBT, AICT, uh, and so on, um, approximately 2.5 crores or three crores, or approximately that. We are publishing about uh, 200 to 250 peer reviewed journal papers yes. every year, along with uh, books and book chapters. Um, uh, and uh, right now, at the RDC, uh, RDC sale that has been formed in our institute, we have five different committees according to the guideline of the UGC. Finance and Infrastructure Committee. We already had a finance section, but this particular committee is going to look after the finances as it associate with the R&D activities and R&D grants and stuff. A Policy and Programs Committee, collaboration including community, uh, digital committee. And then uh, we have a committee on product orientation and commercialization in R&D. And finally, IPR and legal issues, norms and guidelines. Now in our institute, uh, Already we had an Institute Ethics Committee, uh, but uh, we, uh, I will talk about uh, some of the challenges that uh, we are facing as our efforts are, uh, we are trying to put more effort in R&D uh, because we all know that uh, without research, higher education cannot progress. So uh, our opportunities, you know, I would say the challenges are in the form of opportunities. Uh, we have many young budding researchers, uh, almost 90% uh, of our faculties have got PhD. Uh, the rest are uh, progressing through PhD. So we have young uh, budding researchers who are enthusiastic about doing research. They are venturing into uh, various uh, uh, writing grants and writing papers. <laughs> But uh, we are still uh, providing uh, a lot of uh, guidance and R&D orientation, and we lack certain infrastructures, particularly in our future 
plans, we have incubation centers planned uh, for, for such R&D activities, which are necessary for uh, not only for uh, um, developing an R&D culture in our institute, but also for uh, IRG uh, generation. Uh, collaborative R&D activities we have already started. We have uh, several MOUs, including uh, institutes like IIT Guwahati and ICT Mumbai, and uh, among international universities, we have MOU with Malaysia University, and uh, we are uh, spreading uh, in that way. Uh, we have uh, several uh, uh, conferences and uh, consortiums and uh, workshops together. Uh, collaborative research effort uh, have started recently, I would say since 2020, we have got a couple of uh, collaborative projects, which are research projects. One is in the area of food engineering and technology uh, that was uh, funded by ADBT, which had five different institutes, uh, including CIT Kokrajhar as uh, one of the participants. And the other project is uh, in collaboration with Texas University that is on uh, uh, Bodo language, which is our local language here. Bodo language and linguistics. A uh, lot of work, uh, research work is going on in these two areas and we want to uh, cultivate and uh, spread further in other areas as well. Uh, product development is one area where uh, we, I should say that uh, we are a little bit behind. We are still uh, uh, producing some uh, products and uh, uh, some um, uh, technologies which are being utilized, uh, but in terms of commercialization, there is some lacking. We are, uh, I think, RD cell uh, is going to RD cell is going to help in that regard immensely. So um, we are looking forward to that. Regarding IPR and patents, we already have uh, uh, several faculties and researchers are, are uh, 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 filing patents. Uh, some of them are already granted, but uh, there is one issue that uh, we are again facing some challenges. That is the legal matters. In our institute, we don't have a legal expert. Um, uh, full-time legal expert that is for our institute alone. So we have to take uh, consultancies uh, for, for doing that. Uh, as you all know, IPR and patents involve several legal issues. So uh, we are looking for uh, uh, advice and guidance from our uh, R&D cell, particularly from our research advisory council on, in that regard. And perhaps we'll um, progress in that direction uh, in near future. Um, uh, that's all I had in terms right, of right. Uh, in terms of our effort in R and D uh, and formation of R and D cell at CIT Kokraja. I want to thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity. It's a privilege. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Professor Mukherjee, for being uh, brief and uh, for giving the relevant information, especially since uh, you are an institute located in the northeastern region. Um, there are many uh, grassroots innovations, uh, local technologies. Mm -hmm. on which uh, uh, you know uh, many of the institutes located in the northeastern region can focus and develop them and wish you good luck thank, thank you, you very thank much you. Uh, next uh, let us go to uh, dr chakrabarti who is the dean r and d cell chatrapati shivaji maharaj university mumbai uh, good morning sir uh, am i audible is my slide visible sir yes it is visible uh, thank you, sir. Honorable uh, Chairman, Dr. M. Jagdish Kumar, sir, all the dignitaries, honorable speakers, ladies and gentlemen. I feel honored today to be a speaker in this uh, session addressing the very pertinent issue of today, establishment of uh, research and development cell in higher education institutes. Now here at Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj University, we are a very new university established on in 2018. Uh, we can say we are at our infancy. Uh, however, we have established our research and development cell, and it's uh, very challenging to set up uh, research and development uh, in a budding private university. So in our limited time, uh, we have faced certain challenges, so we uh, want to share some of them uh, with you. So first of all, uh, I'd like to uh, thank uh, the Prime Minister Science and Technology Innovation Advisory Council and uh, Ministry of Human Resources Department to set up the uh, National Research Foundation, NRF, as a single apex statutory body that will grant and evaluate research and development. This is a long way awaited move and to empower greatly the research scene of India. So we look forward uh, to the NRF conducting systematic uh, study to identify, prioritize, trust areas, areas of national importance, areas of critical importance, and award research grants accordingly. Now, uh, the R&D sales of individual university and institutes are required 
and we hope to keep regular communication with the NRF, not only regarding acquiring uh, acquisition and disbursements of research fund, but also the maintenance of quality of research and an upkeep of the research practice and establish collaboration with uh, other educational institutes and industries. We expect uh, that uh, when a research is going on on a single topic uh, in different institutes and universities all over India and abroad, it may function like organism of a single body and we may, uh, we may be benefited from uh, each one of us. Secondly, another point I want to raise is uh, developing a sustainable research ecosystem. So that's what we are working on at the moment. So one of the most important role of the uh, RDC uh, in universities is establish, establish uh, is a industry academia collaboration. Now, what we first try to establish is a research coverage of the university by identifying which uh, fields we are currently uh, doing research on and we are active and may contribute to the industry uh, on applicable, readily applicable research. So we can approach uh, both the public and the private sectors to create center of excellences. Uh, the university will produce and dedicate research towards the industry specific problems generating research and patents that uh, is also good quality and uh, readily applicable that will help us bring, uh, bring funds. Further, alongside the doctoral students, the university may involve undergraduate and master students in higher number in these centers of excellence who may be awarded credits uh, by research, also enhancing their employability in the relevant industries. We also look uh, towards the NRF and the Honorable Advisory Council to take necessary steps to empower both the academy industry to form such symbiotic relationships. Finally, there is a very pertinent issue that we should apply is uh, uh, quenching unethical practices. And this is something that we suffer greatly from. By reducing uh, unethical practices, we can greatly enhance the quality of research that is currently going on. Now, uh, I would like to applaud uh, the creation of uh, the UGC CARE, which has uh, worked tirelessly uh, in the help of uh, reducing the um, low quality journals and articles that are repeated, flagrized. However, we still observe that a number of articles are being published in clone journals, uh, which are very tactfully flagrized. So our uh, research and development cell is, uh, uh, has formed a committee and working on it uh, tirelessly so that we can uh, bring up awareness, reduce and uh, discourage uh, publication in clone journals. So this practice has to end for the benefit in general of our, of our nation. And uh, in the advent of the research and development cell, uh, the guidelines that uh, so kindly provided by UGC, uh, necessary amendments uh, has to be made in the statutes and ordinance of universities. And uh, the regulations has to be written in, uh, which is cohesive to the same of the NRF and does meet the global ethical practices. Uh, right, so right. Uh, Professor like Chakravarti. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So I'd right. like to thank, uh, uh, thank you very much for giving this outstanding opportunity to present our thoughts uh, to this platform. And yeah. thank you for your patience. Thank so you, I Professor uh, Chakravarti. Uh, let's now move on to Professor uh, Sujay Choudhury, who is a Dean R&D Cell Indus University, Ahmedabad. Professor Choudhury, you can proceed. Uh, thank you, uh, Professor Kumar. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, my screen is visible? Yes, it is visible. OK, thank you. Uh, uh, my name is uh, Sujay Choudhury, and I'm looking into the uh, research development and innovation cell at Indus University. Let me just brief you about our college. Uh, we are established in uh, 2006 as a private college under uh, Gujarat Technical University. 
and then we got our university status in 2012 so we are fairly very young uh, college or the university uh, in the early days uh, the research uh, portfolio was mainly dedicated to the phd to, to, towards uh, running the phd program and it was at the later stage when the development uh, research and development cell was established then we started focusing on the innovations and uh, working more on the research areas so in this uh, university uh, the research and development cell is being oversighted by our executive president uh, professor sandeep chakravarti and uh, executive vice president professor vedya divedi ji uh, i am basically looking into the overall activities and i am being uh, helped by three uh, important leaders each one of them are leading uh, are, le are having their own portfolio uh, dr nivisha patel he, she is taking care of, of the uh, research project proposals that we submit in a traditional way to all the funding agencies she is also taking care of the publications that we are doing in the university uh, Sh uh, shweta shah is uh, leading uh, the phd program and she is uh, handling all the uh, and making sure all the phd policies that are in place uh, that are being implemented to the grassroots level and shashwat is our youngest uh, team members here in the r and d cell and he is uh, leading our effort in the incubation and the startup uh, center that we have at in this university now as far as the best practices is concerned as i said we have three key portfolios one is the phd program itself in order to strengthen the phd program we do uh, uh, we do follow all the ugc regulations and ugc guidelines we offer orientation programs uh, by yearly because our phd admission takes place twice uh, for running this uh, phd programs we it is mandatory for every research guide to submit a shod paricharcha bi weekly so that we are updated about the progress that are made by the research scholars we have signed uh, mous with uh, leading organizations as well as private companies right now we have more than 50 uh mou signed with these organizations and majority of them are in very active state in addition to the formal uh, collaboration we also are undertaking some in informal uh, collaborative research with the leading organization like uh, institute of plasma research national metallurgical laboratory isro etc uh for our phd program each research scholars are assigned with uh, rsc uh, committee members uh, research assessment committee and is in this committee we have uh, recruited one expert member which is nominated uh, from the industry or from the research lab or from the higher educational institutes um, this rscs they meet uh, biannually to assess the progress of the phd work in addition we have recently uh, approved the research policy in our uh, university which offers multiple financial and career advancement schemes to the researchers for example if you are publishing journals in the uh, papers uh, journal papers in uh, sci journals or you are going for uh, attending a conference presentations then uh, the university is going to bear the financial uh, part and you are also going to uh, award them for publishing papers in good journals similarly for the books the uh, grant of the ipr the royalty sharing uh, for the technology transfer we have also introduced uh, two awards one for the best uh, researcher award and the another one is best young researcher award for uh, the researchers which who are uh, less than 30 years of age we also have very limited uh, fellowship for the selected uh, full time research scholars for pursuing the phd programs we have the membership of uh, american uh, society of metals as well as ieee and uh, we host uh, we are the local host of the chapter and we organize several activities uh we also uh, organize several awareness activities in the form of ipr off workshop the seminars the fdp programs for the beginners uh, which includes the topics like you know the importance of the phd course work the research methodology the research ethics and integrity uh, critical literature reviews writing manuscript and the research funding opportunities and how to write the uh, research proposals so this is the uh, key initiatives and the best practices that we are following at indus university for our phd program Similarly, we have the research project portfolio uh, in our university, where we are trying to strengthen this uh, portfolio by encouraging the uh, researchers to submit the project proposals either to the government agencies or even to the private agencies. So that part also has been streamlined. Initially, it was taking a much longer time to uh, go through the screening process. That that process also we have streamlined. We have already formulated the policies which are in place right now. the consultancy policies the uh, it had been in existence for the last 4 5 years and it is working 
as per our expectations. The third and the most important part of our uh, university's uh, best practice is that uh, we have decentralized the uh, workflow uh, in terms of our structure, and we have empowered the youth to take the leadership positions. And one of our assistant dean is actually a very young faculty of less than 30 years of age, and he is the one who's leading this uh, uh, innovation and the incubation uh, center at Indus. So we have established this uh, incubation center in 2008. Right, uh, Professor Chaudhary, you have to conclude now. Okay. Uh, just one second. Uh, we have signed with the uh, MOU with the government of Gujarat uh, for five years, where the government is paying one crore rupees and we are paying uh, one point zero five crore rupees. And we have uh, right now uh, we have about thirty five ongoing projects going on under this particular scheme. And out of them, three of them have already been incubated and the startup uh, companies have started uh, operational. Now here I want to point out just one thing that uh, whenever you have this kind of incubation center, the government is investing money to the students and alumni. They are going for the starting a business. They are making profit. They are giving taxes. That money goes back to the government. So it's a sustainable, sustainable ecosystem. Whereas in case of a private university like us, when we are investing on our students and alumni and they are uh, you know, earning profit and uh, making a successful uh, startup, we are not getting anything in return. So therefore my proposal to the chairman of UGC is to negotiate with the Minister of Education for developing a sustainable ecosystem for private university. Uh, that will help us to you know, galvanize this activity into a further side. At Indus University, we are also trying to apply for uh, Atal Incubation Center, which is on a bigger scale. Thank you. So Thank you, Professor Chaudhary. We have to conclude it now. I'm, I'm for sorry for stopping it here because we are running short of time. Thank you for uh, uh, informing about uh, the progress that is being going on um, in your uh, university. Let's now move to Dr. Uh, Suresh Pujari, who is a Dean R&D Cell. Dr. Suresh Pujari. Please call. Chairman, UGC, respected professors of various universities. Good morning to all of you. I deem it my privilege to present research and development cell established at St. Lucius College, Bangalore, to all of you. Establishment of research and development cell in a higher education institution in India is playing a very important role. Uh, with the introduction of national education policy. The establishment of a national research foundation provides greater opportunity for young researchers to create research and innovation mindset among the students and faculty. St. Lucius College Autonomous Mangalore is a premier educational institution imparting quality education since 1880 and engaging itself in research and innovation in multidisciplinary and multidisciplinary uh, areas. Our college established research and development cell as per the guidelines given by UGC, keeping in mind the vision and mission statement of UGC. Here, professors, I'm giving a brief sketch of the profile of Central Lucy's College Mangalore. Uh, our college is accredited by NAC with A grade with the CGPA of 3.62 in third cycle. We have submitted SSR for the Dr. Uh, Dr. Suresh Pujari, yes, uh, please tell us uh, what are the R&D activities that are going on and what are the recent uh, yes. you know, achievements? Yes. So this uh, our college activities. Now, vision and mission we have taken already from the UGC statement only. And we have designed the objectives of research and development cell of our college according to our local economy and according to the research environment created in the college. Uh, this is as per the UGC uh, aims and objectives. Now, we have already prepared a structure of RDC. Mangalore Jesuit Education Society is managing our institution, rector is the head. We have a governing body. And the principal is in charge of uh, chairman of research and development cell. 
we are already having research advisory research ethics committee and at the same time we have already uh, structured few committees to carry on the research and development activities in the college finance and infrastructure research program policy development collaboration with community product development monitoring commercialization ipr legal and ethical matters we have formed the committees and then we are already having research policy research and innovation cell to promote research in the college we have entrepreneurship and consultancy cell entrepreneurship policy and we also started center lotus incubation center with incubation policy to mentor and advise the young uh, entrepreneur student entrepreneurs and we have institutional infrastructure and equipment we are providing uh, in the incubation center and uh, research ecosystem uh, what is there in the college we are already a research center all pg departments of our college are the research centers of mangalore university tumkur university and ampi university now we have 105 ph holders 23 research guides now we have 36 management funded research project three vgst funded project one dbt builder major research project level 1 to karnataka science and technology academy project ugc strike scheme uh, research grant uh, level 1 and we have 32 international mous 39 national level mous and uh, we have a good infrastructure for uh, science research now laboratory of applied biology established in 1976 developed first tissue culture cashew plant as 19 equipment costing more than 80 lakh 75000 advanced instrumentation center equipment costing more than 1.50 crores donated by alumni 49 departmental science laboratories nine laboratories exclusively for research then 16 computer laboratories with total 1044 computer systems and um, uh, management of our college provided seed money for conducting minor major research projects science and information 8 lakhs rupees for major projects humanity social science language commercial management 5 lakhs minor research project for science and information 3 lakhs and uh, humanity social science commercial management languages 2 lakhs and student research also encouraged for science post graduate students are getting 10000 rupees grant to complete their project and 5000 rupees for uh, humanities and other departments uh professor uh, suresh pujari i have to uh, stop here because we are running short of time and thank you very much uh, uh, for the progress that is taking place in your college and wish you all the best um let's now move to dr akshaya murugeshan who is coordinator r&d cell lady do college tamil nadu very good morning to all of you am i sir yes please go ahead So uh, I represent uh, Lelio College, a premier uh, Christian institution. So the research and development cell of the college was established in the year 2006 in order to enable the conducive environment for the faculty and the research scholars to pursue their research career successfully. And uh, R and D cell functions under the wing of deans of academic affairs. and all the activities related to uh, research will be monitored evaluated by rd cell and it will be sent to daa for approval and final approval will be given by the principal and secretary and it is constituted with the coordinators along with the supporting of faculty from science and humanities uh, i have listed here eight important functions of rd cell we help in conducting uh, workshops and training for capacity building of the faculty and research scholars and we uh, help in communicating all the research opportunities for the scholars as well for the uh, students and we also help i mean the rdc help in building connections with the potential alumni involved in research and uh, uh, we help in assisting in availing uh, external funds we also provide financial support for the research publications and for the uh, participations and presentations in the workshops and conferences and uh, we help in uh, providing guidance to uh, set a goal to achieve a lifetime achievement as well the early career research award which the management is giving for the research uh, researchers here i am in the faculty for, uh, we also help in formulate the mous to enable uh, the collaborative research and we help in assisting the research guides and the scholars in their research process 
we have the research policy and based on the research policy the faculty will be involved in pro proactively involved in promotion of research and uh, using the resources at lady rock college we encourage the faculty members to be globally competent in research and we also help the faculty members to be involved in interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary research and the best practice i would say the uh, college uh, in order to ensure quality research in publication as well in the presentation of paper we follow code of ethics that is we have a, a technical review committee the presenter should uh, uh, present the paper in the uh, technical review committee where an expert will evaluate along with the team of other senior faculties of the department and interdisciplinary department and the validated presentation will be uh, uh, further approved after incorporating all the suggestions it will be approved by the expert and it has to uh, pass through the plagiarism check uh, and the final uh, approval will be given by the RDC. Uh, we help in providing uh, uh, promoting the research by providing an innovative ecosystem wherein the RDSL along with the IPSL we collaborate with other two centers of Lady Rock College. One of the important center is Life Center, which is a community-based action research center where the students will be engaged uh, with the research in the society, societal based on the societal needs. And uh, second is Center for Entrepreneurship Development. And uh, the basic research, as on the whole, I would say like we have uh, 23 research guides presently and with 86 uh, registered PhD scholars. We do have consultancy policy framed and uh, which helps in sharing the knowledge according to the need of the society. We also provide seed money for uh, doing core research as well, the institutional project. And we motivate the faculty to uh, register for patents uh, of their innovations and uh, to motivate the faculty uh, to publish uh, in a UGC peer reviewed journals as well in uh, uh, international journals, a cash award is given at, uh, every year and also a Lifetime Achievement Award, Cash Award, uh, Early Career Research Award uh, is also being given for the uh, faculty who is consistently doing the research. And we have eight research departments. The college has been funded with so much of uh, external funding agency, EGC, IC, SSR, DSG, SERB, DBG, and uh, these are the, uh, to mention few, these are the national uh, agency and we have international uh, collaborations also with the uh, Tampere University of Finland, Malcolm and Elizabeth uh, Trust. And uh, this is a, uh, a data uh, for the past, from, uh, from 2015. So almost all the departments are actively involved in mobilizing the funds and almost uh, two pros we have received uh, from 2015, I mean 16 data. So as on- right. the um uh, we had to conclude here, Dr. Akshaya Murugeshan, because of short of time. Yes, yes. And sir. we congratulate you for uh, doing wonderful work and uh, putting all your efforts to improve the research ecosystem in your college. Uh, now, we will move on to Professor uh, Nara Kalyani, who is coordinator R&D cell, G. Narayanamma Institute of Technology and Science, Hyderabad. Dr. Kalyani, you have only five minutes time. I see that you have 21 slides, but uh, be very brief and conclude in about four minutes, four, four and a half minutes. Sir, hope the screen is visible. Yes, it is visible. Please go ahead. So, good morning, sir. Good morning, all dignitaries. I feel honored uh, for giving me this honor, uh, uh, this scope for expressing my, uh, sorry. I feel honored to express my views on behalf of Genix. Uh, so, this is my agenda. 
So regarding the research and uh, development, uh, as we all know that prior, our honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi ji announced uh, Atmar Nirbar Bharat Abhiyan. So in this regard, uh, we can always say that these are the five pillars of uh, reliant in, self-reliant India, economy, infrastructure, system, demography, and demand. So coming to the basic types of R&D, since we all know that there are three forms of uh, R&D, one is incremental, radical R&D, and fundamental. Most of our private colleges, they are mainly focusing on in incremental R&D wherein we are trying to apply the existing knowledge on uh, and coming up uh, with a new uh, technology that can be developed using existing r and uh, The major challenge that we face is lack of infrastructure to go ahead with fundamental research and uh, radical R&D. So coming to the top level methodology, since we know that unless and until there is a good collaboration with uh, high reputed uh, uh, industries, it will not be possible for any private college to work in uh, direction of developing uh, good R&D projects which can help the e-business. So just to uh, brief on, uh, since we all know that India imports uh, uh, major components uh, from other... Uh, Professor uh, Nara Kalyani, yes, sir? Uh, just focus on your R&D cell, what you are doing. Yes, sir. Because we have very little time now. I just now. wanted to just put a word stating that most of the private colleges, they uh, have a major challenge in acquiring funds. So I just wanted to keep that as a upfront. Okay. Okay. Since uh, we all know that there are many private colleges uh, which are mainly contributing for the national development. So I would uh, uh, suggest that if there are good amount of research grants that can be given to private colleges, uh, which can help in, in enhancing their infrastructure. So this will definitely help in enhancing their uh, research potential. So coming to the highlights of Janet's, uh, ours is an autonomous college exclusively for women, which is established in 97. And it is UGC autonomous offering eight programs and five PG programs. We have uh, credentials relating to National Employability Award Educational Leadership uh, Award. Right, uh, Professor Nara Kalyani, this information is available. Yeah. Um, what we will do is, uh, I take your point that uh, support should be provided to the uh, private institutions for uh, carrying out research. Yes, um, I appreciate that. But, um, but we have to uh, conclude now. We have spent about uh, one and a half hour and we have listened to nearly 13 uh, uh, institutions the activities that are going on. And as you can see uh, that uh, the activities vary from institute to institute, but the bottom line is everybody is trying to improve the research ecosystem um, as outlined in our uh, national education policy. Um, on September 5th, we are going to announce uh, some research schemes uh, for young faculty, for uh, middle uh, career faculty, even retired faculty and several uh, post, uh, 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 postdoctoral research fellowships. So many of those uh, schemes we are going to announce on, February, uh, on September 5th on Teacher's Day. I hope that uh, many of you will apply for these uh, research schemes and get funding uh, to your educational institutions. Um, to conclude, the idea of uh, arranging this meeting is uh, uh, to know from each other what are the activities that are going on and uh, also the challenges that uh, all of us uh, face in building the research ecosystem here in our institutes. Um, I was watching at our uh, YouTube channel, nearly 1200 people were watching live all your presentations. And in another couple of days, several thousands uh, will be watching uh, uh, this program. Uh, I'm sure the um, things that you have mentioned as part of your presentations will uh, act as a kind of template for other institutes also to set up their R&D cells and improve the research ecosystem. And we also are working on the four-year undergraduate program. And as part of that, we would like to encourage undergraduate research. Um, and in addition to that, we are promoting, based on the NEP guidelines, internship, research internship for the students, many more uh, such uh, initiatives are coming from UGC. 
please uh, do watch some of these uh, uh, initiatives uh, on our social media platforms such as uh, LinkedIn and the UGC Twitter handle. We announce uh, many of these things there, what is happening in terms of the implementation of the national education policy. Um, I would like to thank our officers from UGC who are part of this uh, uh, wonderful gathering uh, that has been arranged by them. And I would like to thank all of you for participating in this event and for sharing uh, your inputs. Thank you. Thank you very much.